In this video, we'll do some chain rule examples that also involve the product or quotient rules. We will have to combine multiple rules. All right, so example four says, let c of theta be tangent to the fourth of theta times cosecant of theta to the fourth. And I want to find the derivative. All right, so the first thing that I want to observe is when we write a power like this on the tangent to the fourth, that means we're doing tangent of theta, but to the fourth power. That's just notationally, you know, how we write exponents on, on trig functions. We write them here. We write them a little bit earlier. Okay, so we have that, and then times cosecant. The fourth power there is inside of the cosecant. It's on the angle. Okay, so that's going to be important to know. Because we have a tangent and a cosecant, let's just quickly recall their derivatives. So let's recall what the derivative, in this case my variable is theta, what dd theta of tangent of theta is. So we'll write down that, and then let's do dd theta of cosecant of theta. So let's do those. So recall tangent of theta, that derivative is secant squared, and the derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant cotangent. All right, so those are both going to be relevant. All right, so when we look at this function and we want to take its derivative, we have two functions being multiplied. So because of that, we have to do product rule first. Later, we're going to get to taking the derivative of each of those functions individually, and those may require chain rule, but initially it's the first tangent to the fourth function times the cosecant of theta to the fourth function. So it's product rule first. All right, so when we do that, we'll get c prime of theta equals the first function tangent to the fourth of theta times the derivative of the next thing. And I'm going to write it out in steps. So I'll do the dd theta of cosecant of theta to the fourth. As we get more comfortable with these, I'll just start to do this all in one step. All right, so, and then plus the second function, cosecant of theta to the fourth times the derivative of the first. So times the derivative of the tangent to the fourth, and I'm going to write it as tangent of theta like this, and then to the fourth power. So it's going to be easier to see what my inside and outside function is when I take the derivative. All right, so we get c prime of theta, I'm really going to give myself some room here, equals tangent to the fourth of theta, and then times, so for the derivative of cosecant of theta to the fourth. I have an outside function, it's the cosecant, and then I have an inside function, this theta to the fourth. So I'm going to need the chain rule for that. And I'm definitely going to need the chain rule for this. Even for the tangent of theta, that whole thing to the fourth power, I'm going to need chain rule there as well, because I got this outside function, this the fact that I got this fourth power, and then this inside function, this tangent of theta, that's definitely going to be chain rule. Okay, that's going to be chain rule. Okay, so for the cosecant of theta to the fourth, the derivative of the cosecant part is negative cosecant. I'm going to leave a little space. Cotangent, so negative cosecant cotangent. And I can't just write theta in these spots because chain rule says when you do the derivative of the outside, keep plugging in the same inside thing. And in this case, the inside function is the theta to the fourth. So I keep plugging in theta to the fourth. And then chain rule says, well, do the chain rule step. And in the chain rule step, I multiply by the derivative of the inside thing. And that is 4 theta to the third. That's power rule. OK, and now we're on to the next term. We get cosecant of theta to the fourth times, and now we're ready for this chain rule. The outside thing here is this fourth power. So I'm going to do power rule. The 4 is going to come down. I'm going to leave a little space. And then I'll have a, th a 3. I'll subtract one from the power. But I don't get to just write like theta here. Again, because chain rule says, okay, when you do the derivative of the outside, keep plugging in the same inside thing, which in this case is tangent. In this case is tangent. And then it says, well, do the chain rule step and multiply by the derivative of the inside. Derivative of tangent is secant squared theta. And I should close this bracket. And that is my answer. One simplification that would be nice to do is this tangent theta to the third that I've written like this, it would be nice to just write this as 
tangent cubed of theta. That, it means the same thing. All right, let's look at the next example. So this one says, let a of x be x minus 4 to the 10th power over 1 minus 3x, that to the 5th power. Find all values of x where the tangent line is horizontal. All right, so it wants us to find where the tangent line is horizontal. So a line is horizontal if the slope is 0. And the slope of the tangent line is the derivative. So this wants to know when, when is the derivative of this function. Whoops, I should write the derivative of a. When is the derivative of a going to be equal to 0? OK, so this is equivalent to finding when the derivative is 0. So what I first want you to do is do a quick pause, just 30 seconds, to see if you can identify hmm, what rule do I use first on this? Is it quotient rule? Is it chain rule? Is it product rule? Power rule? What rule do I use first? Just that. Four, three, two, one. Quick pause, 30 seconds. See if you can figure out what rule we use first. Alrighty, so hopefully you did that. Let's talk about it. So we use, because I, and most immediately what I have is I have this function on top divided by this thing on the bottom. So we are going to do the quotient rule first. We're going to do the quotient rule first. If I had had something like maybe x minus 4 over 1 minus 3x, and this whole thing was being raised to a power like the 10th power, now, most immediately, I see this whole fraction being plugged into a 10th power, and that would be chain rule first. So we'll get better at this, at recognizing what rule we do when, with more practice. So if you are occasionally not knowing which rule to use or you know, guessing an, an incorrect rule, that's okay. Don't be, don't be too hard on yourself. That is totally natural. That's part of the learning process. It's important to get practice and through that practice, we get more comfortable with it. And if you have questions, that is absolutely normal. But use our resources for help to ask when you have those questions. All right, so we're going to do quotient rule first. Now that we know that, I am going to give you, uh, let's do four minutes to try this question and see if you can uh, finish it or get close to finishing it in four minutes. Four, three, two, one. Pause it for four minutes and see if you can take it from here. All right, let's talk about it together. So we need quotient rule. So we do the derivative here. Quotient rule says, well, first, low d high. So low is a 1 minus 3x to the 5. And then we need d high. OK, so I'm going to get right into it. So we need chain rule for the derivative of the top because we got some stuff to the 10th power. The outside part is the fact that I got the 10th power. Let's bring that down, subtract 1 from the power. But when I do that, I don't just write x in here. I keep writing the inside function which is x minus 4. And then I multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is 1. OK, so that's, that's d high. We have low d high. And then I need minus high. So high is x minus 4 to the 10. And then d low. So for the derivative of the bottom, it's going to be similar. Bring the power down. Subtract 1 from the power, so I'll have a 4. And then keep the inside the same, 1 minus 3x. And then multiply by the derivative of the inside, the derivative of 1 minus 3x, that is negative 3. OK, let's close that bracket. And then we get all over low squared. So all over 1 minus 3x to the 5 being squared. OK, so now we need, let's simplify. We get a prime of x equals. We've seen problems like this before, where we had like you know a bunch of terms with powers on top, and like minus uh, you know same terms with different powers, and something like that on the bottom. In our pre-calculus algebra review, and we saw those then, so that we can handle questions like this now. Now that we know how to take the derivative of things like this. Okay, so let's identify what terms are common on top. So if I look at just the numbers, the constants, there's a ten here. And 5 times a 3, 15, OK. So I can take out a 5. What else is common? There's 1 minus 3x. Let's see, the smaller power is 4. And there's also this x minus 4 term. I could take out x minus 4 to the 9. That's the smaller power. When I do that, from the first term, all of this, from the 10, when I took out a 5, there's a 2 left over. And then I'll still have a 1 minus 3x, just one of those. I took out all nine of the x minus fours. All right, let's, let's look, go to the next term now. 
let's see, uh, when, I took it, when I take out this 5, I'll still have the negative 3 with this other negative in front of it. So that'll give me a plus 3 left over for the constant term. And I will also have an x minus 4 to the 1, because there used to be 10 of them, and I factored out 9. All right, so that is what I'm left with there over 1 minus 3x. And the exponent rule here for power, and then to another power, as you multiply the powers. All right, and we want to know, well, when does this equal? When does this equal 0? So the stuff in brackets, let's simplify. If I distribute the 2, we get 2 minus 6x. Distribute the 3 to get plus 3x minus 12. And this is negative 3x minus 10. So we have 5 times, uh, I can do a little bit of cancellation. 1 minus 3x to the 4, I can cancel with the ones on bottom. And that'll leave me with this power as a 6. So we have 5 times x minus 4 to the 9, and then times negative 3x minus 10 over that 1 minus 3x to the 6 equals 0. Okay, and now I can get rid of the denominator by multiplying both sides by 1 minus 3x to the 6. 1 minus 3x to the 6, that'll cancel the denominator and leave me with 5 times x minus 4 to the 9 times negative 3x minus 10 equals zero. Okay, and once it's factored in equals zero, I'm ready to say what x is. So from the x minus four to the nine term, what could make that be zero? Well, it's four. And then from the negative three x minus 10, you know, I might need to write it out, negative three x minus 10, well, what makes that zero? If you were to solve it, you would get x equals negative 10 over three. And those are our answers. One quick thing I should check is, when I'm solving an equation like this, I have this equation set at equal to zero, and there's variables in the denominator, I should make sure that none of my answers make my denominator zero. Because if they do, they're extraneous. But using a quick check, this denominator is only going to be zero if x is one third. And that's not one of the answers I got. So that's good. That's good. Neither of these answers is extraneous. So in terms of our goals, we finished this, the second part of goal two recognizing when and how we apply chain rule combined with other rules like the product and quotient rules.